So I recently read um, Tali Sherritt's The Influential Mind, What the Brain Reveals About Our Power to Change Others. And I got to be honest, this is one that I was sort of 50-50 about picking up because, you know, I wasn't sure. I was kind of like, you know, am I actually going to learn anything from this? Or am I going to feel like this is all sort of stuff that I've probably kind of heard somewhere before? But I figured, you know, it's a light read. Might as well give it a shot. You know, it's only a little over 200 pages. It's not a huge opportunity cost. And, you know, if I can glean anything positive from it, I consider that like a, you know, I consider it worth picking up. And got to say, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, not necessarily in the way that the title might suggest, because um, like the subtitle here is what the brain reveals about our power to change others. For the most part, I think really what I felt like I was getting out of it had more to do with, it gave me insights on kind of what makes me tick, kind of why I react the way I do to some of the things I react to. Um, you know, gave me some ideas on how to sort of work my own mind a little bit, which I found really helpful. So yeah, um, I don't know, maybe for other people to be different, maybe people would, you know, other some other people would pick up me and say, like, okay, cool, I know more about how to like persuade people now. So but that's not necessarily what I felt like I was getting. Um, it's a lot of interesting facts in it. Some of which are kind of tangential, some of which are kind of like extremely relevant to the overall arguments being made. Um, I think, you know, like how only 13% of people want to live in a country other than the one they currently live in. And most of those 13, it's even countries that are like neighboring countries, like, you know, Austrians wanting to move in like Switzerland or like US to Canada or whatever. Um. I was really fascinated to learn that like apparently only between like 30 and 40% of people and like of workers in the restaurant industry actually wash their hands when they're in the bathroom. I didn't know that. Um, and apparently it's the same at like hospitals and like medical facilities. It's right around like 30 to 40%. And even more interestingly, apparently, like the ex one of the things experimenters found when they started looking at like what kind of things like change that and what kind of things don't, they found that like letting people know that they're being watched and actually like watching them to see what they do when they're in the bathroom doesn't actually make them more likely to <laughs> wash their hands. Um, but of course, then the book gets into like what experimenters found actually does have an impact, which I actually did find really fascinating. So. Um, I enjoyed that part of it. I think one other part of this that really sort of resonated with me was, you know, toward the second half of the book, she talks a lot about, you know, the power of many minds, you know, the whole idea of how, like, you know, in a lot, of, given the right situation, given the right circumstances, you know, the average of a bunch of people's guess at something or, you know, their answer to a question is more likely to be correct than like, just like a random individual, but how one of the factors you have to account for if you want to try to tap into that is to make sure that their minds are actually working independently because otherwise they like the first ones will kind of influence the others a lot. Um, that resonated with me a lot as a writing instructor because I've had that experience a lot where, you know, I'll assign a reading and, you know, one semester, you know, the whole class will like be pretty much in agreement with the author that I had them read. But then like the next semester, they'll all be completely on the other side. And, you know, it occurred to me that either there's like a big coincidence going on here or the first couple people that like speak up on that day kind of set the tone for where everybody else ends up going. Um, particularly, I think one semester I actually showed a class that I had a debate between um, Alex Epstein and Bill McKibben on like fossil fuels and whether or not we should be like cutting way back on them. 
And, you know, I showed them a slightly abbreviated version of the debate. I cut out just enough that we'd have time to discuss it in that class period. And it seemed like everybody in the class was largely on McKibben's side. They largely thought he did a better job. But the people who, you know, missed class that day, you know, I sent them, you know, an email saying, okay, you know, to make up participation for today, just watch the debate on your own time and answer like a series of questions. And one of them was like, who do you think performed better? And, you know, multiple people who weren't in class and watched it on their own thought Epstein did better, but most of the people who were in the class seemed more or less unanimous on McKibben's side. And so it's, I've seen that at work a lot, that thing that she's talking about and sort of her broader point is that like, if you really want to like, you know, you want to be like aware of like how people influence one another, you know, and when their minds aren't really as independent as you think they are. And the value of taking steps to ensure that, you know, people's minds are working independently if you're going to get opinions on something from a lot of people. Um, In the case of, you know, teaching a writing class, the thing that you can do that's cool is like have them do like an informal writing assignment where you give them, you know, 10 minutes to like write in response to the prompt and then discuss it. And, you know, you collect them at the end. So it's like, okay, you know, you get a sense of like, you know, what people think during the discussion, but then after you come back, it's like, okay, you know, (laughs) was that discussion actually representative where a lot of people fell on this? Um, But yeah, it's an interesting book. There's a, Toward the very end of it, she also talks a little bit about, like, the idea of, like, the potential for, like, minds to, like, influence other minds in a more direct sense by, like, the actual, like, transfer of, like, thoughts and emotions. And she talks about, like, the the tests that they've done where they've gotten, like, a mind to, like, hook up to a rat and, like, be able to like, make the human brain move, like, the rat's tail and all kinds of cool stuff like that. <laughs> um, it's a fun read. I recommend it.